Hey there people, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So here is a video a lot of people would have been waiting for and have been waiting for. And that is my own personal 30 day before and after vegan keto transformation, or you could say even an experimentation. And what I'm gonna do in this video is first talk about the start of this journey and the foods that I was eating on this vegan ketogenic diet, the positives that I noticed, the negatives, and all of the detailed information that I can explain to you as best as I possibly can. And what I did was try documenting as much as I could with this whole vegan ketogenic diet through certain videos and writing down a lot, like a diary on my phone, which I will use my phone at certain points to look at some of the things that I have written down with the experience of this vegan ketogenic diet. So, when I first embarked on this journey, I felt just a natural desire to experiment with it. And I'd been on a high carbohydrate vegan diet, at one point raw, then partially raw, and then fully cooked, and some variations of a high carbohydrate vegan diet. And that is really, really amazing results from it. Eliminate so many health issues and symptoms. So due to my programming from the people that I'd learned from over the years is fat, well, the fat you eat is the fat you wear and fat is really bad for you. So I had all of this programming around it. So when I went to start this diet, I had a lot of fears come up. But instead I just felt the fear and just did it anyway. I thought, what have I got to lose? If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'm not gonna die, so it's absolutely fine. So I just pushed through that fear and just started this journey. And what I wanna say is, I made sure before I started that I did as much research as I possibly could to learn from some of the best people on this specific diet so I could make it work the best for me. And I'm one of those people that will search high and low and make sure that I learn every in and out that I need to make a diet work for me, whether it's a vegan ketogenic diet or any diet that I've tried in the past. And I also did a lot of research whilst I was doing the vegan ketogenic diet because there's so many people that do a vegan ketogenic diet in the most unhealthy way possible and then they can say it's making them feel really bad and they're just not knowledgeable on the subject to make it work the best for them and for it to be the healthiest vegan ketogenic diet as well. So that's just something to be aware of if you're gonna embark on this journey just like I have. So before I go on to explaining to you what happened at certain times throughout this 30 day ketogenic experimentation is I made sure that I was using these multiple times every single day. These are ketosis strips. And I found that I was getting into a state of ketosis very early on in this ketogenic diet. I think it's because I've done a lot of things such as one meal a day and other forms of intermittent fasting. So my body was pretty good at producing abundance of ketones. And I would normally be in the high range. So anywhere from 8.0 to 16, which from what I've learned, can happen and does happen to most people when you get on a ketogenic diet. Your body's producing abundance of ketones. Your body is not using them all up. It is not very adapted to using the ketones. And I did this to make sure that I was doing this diet correctly for me to actually get the full ketosis state induced within me because there's a lot of people that make mistakes and then they don't feel good on it and they can blame the ketogenic diet not working for them. Maybe they're having too much carbs, not enough fat, not enough calories or some other things. And then I found, which most people will find after about three weeks, that the amount of ketones present within my urine went down to about 4.0, which just means my body has started to use up a lot of the ketones that it was naturally producing. I'm gonna show some clips here, and this is gonna be the last thing that I talk about, and then I'll go on to the whole 30 day information that you need to know with my whole journey on the ketogenic diet. So, my day one starting date, which I actually filmed this, but I lost a clip for it, I was at 69.5 kilograms. And then, at day six, I had found, running up to this, my weight started to slowly decrease every single day. It went down to 66.5 kilos, so I lost three kilograms of weight within six days. Then at day 11, I actually went up by one kilo, 67.5. 
And then when it got to day 30, I got to 64.5 kilos, which is five kilograms. And what I can say now is I did not get on this journey to lose weight. I'm already very ripped and muscular, as you can see here, got very visible abs and you can see striations in my muscles. So this is something that I knew would happen on a ketogenic diet, but I didn't know how much. But this happens with so many people in the early stages because it is stripping water weight. This is not muscle or fat. So I wasn't concerned about it at all, but I prefer to be a heavier weight. But it was just something that I had to accept and that happened on this. And this is why so many people say the vegan ketogenic diet, any type of ketogenic diet, just works wonders for weight loss but a lot of people will lose weight very early on which is just water weight and then the weight loss effects start to slow down and they take a longer period of time and for me the transition was really easy i just made sure i bought all of the foods that i knew that i needed to eat on this diet to make it work the best for me in the healthiest way possible and I made sure the whole time that I was tracking my macro and micronutrient intake through chronometer, I was weighing every single thing that I was pretty much eating to make sure I was hitting all of my macronutrients and not eating too many carbs, make sure I was eating enough fat and getting enough protein and that I was hitting all of my vitamin and mineral intakes and make sure that I was getting enough omega-3 and not too much omega-6, which is a huge issue that can happen on a vegan ketogenic diet that can cause gut and brain inflammation and a whole host of other issues as well. So due to me having loads of experience with many different diets before, I found this really, really easy to stick to. I didn't have to resist any temptations to eat any other food whatsoever, even though I was around people and going to certain places where there was loads of high carbohydrate, nice vegan junk foods and all these other foods. And the reason why that was for me, it's not necessarily gonna be for you, is I've done so much inner work on eating issues that I had in the past, such as orthorexia and just binge eating and other different issues that I had going on with eating. And I've had a lot of experience with very restrictive diets. I ate a fruitarian diet for three months straight, just fruit only. And I ate a raw vegan diet for around two years, which is actually in many ways more restrictive than this vegan ketogenic diet. So I've really done loads of things years before getting on this diet that made it easy for me to sustain it. What I found is for the first six days when I started this diet, I noticed that I had a very extreme fatigue pretty much all day long, which was not nice for obvious reasons. But I thought, okay, I know people can have some keto flu symptoms and maybe there's just some mistakes that I am making. So I just kept pushing on through, doing some more research into why this may be happening. And yeah, when this was happening, it would happen after I'd eat a meal. It felt that my blood sugar levels were actually dropping too low, which was making me feel really fatigued, which I'd had issues many, many years ago on other different diets. So I know what that feels like. So what happened, I did loads of research and a lot of people say you need more unrefined high quality sea salt. So I started upping the amount of salt that I was consuming by small amounts every single day. Some people say have up to 10,000 milligrams a day, which I do not recommend that at all. A lot of people find it works for them, but it definitely wasn't working for me. I went nowhere near that. And I found as the salt was going up, I was feeling more and more fatigued. So then what I discovered from my own research and experimentation was that I was getting too much sodium, not enough potassium, and not enough magnesium. So what I started doing was using cream of tartar anywhere from a quarter to a half of a teaspoon of this. And I was already eating a lot of potassium rich foods such as vegetables that are really high in potassium and they would make me feel better but this was the real thing that really helped me. So I reduced my salt intake, made sure I was getting more potassium and also made sure that I was getting enough magnesium which I was making sure that I was getting enough magnesium through supplementation through a form of magnesium known as magnesium malate. As soon as I resolved that, boom, energy levels went up, wasn't feeling bad from the foods and meals I was eating on a ketogenic diet, which was really, really good. So that didn't take me too long to work that out. And yeah, my energy levels went 
through the roof. I just had sustained energy levels without any ups and downs, no blood sugar levels going up and down whatsoever. And I found that my mind was just working like a superhuman mind. The cognitive functions with my memory, alertness, focusness, well, focus, and other cognitive functions were just optimized as if someone given me some sort of smart <laughs> which is really good. And I found with training in the gym, I could train really, really, really intense for longer periods of time and that I was recovering way faster. And I just felt so amazing all around. My digestion was on point absolutely optimal which some people do get some digestive issues on this diet but i was not at least at this current point and what i'm going to start to do is show you some videos of certain meals and foods i was eating which could make this video more interesting for you so for around 13 days i was pretty much eating all whole foods except for coconut oil which is organic, extra virgin, unrefined coconut oil in a glass bottle that is made here in Thailand, where I live. And I would pretty much always break my fast with one tablespoon of this, and then around two hours later, I would then have a high-fat superfood smoothie, such as some as you will see on this screen. But after around 13 days, my girlfriend had embarked on the vegan ketogenic diet with me later on. She didn't start when I started and she wanted to start making certain non whole foods such as vegan keto cookies. So she made us some vegan keto cookies and I started having them and what I found is they started to massively slow down my digestion and cause what is known as constipation. But I become fully aware that it was that and they were massively full of locally made coconut flour, which the meat that is used from coconuts for that is very old meat that is very hard to digest and is just not really good for people to could be consuming. So I stopped those and then my digestion went back to normal about three days afterwards. So I managed to resolve that very quickly. And I just learned that, yeah, I didn't really desire those foods whatsoever. And I was more than happy to be eating the foods I was eating before, or pretty much all whole foods, but my girlfriend wanted to make them for me. So I was willing to experiment, but yeah, it just didn't go well for me. So I discontinued that very, very quickly. And then I want to mention about my other meal. So my superfood smoothie, it did vary at times to times. A lot of time I would just use only coconut milk that was made raw locally sometimes pasteurized one, and also almond milk that had nothing added to it whatsoever, just 100% almond milk. And then I normally add cacao butter, cacao powder, and this spirulina, which is Nutrix's Hawaiian spirulina, which I've used for a very long period of time before I was even on this diet. And I was using this to make sure I was getting a broad spectrum of different micronutrients. It's such a micronutrient dense spirulina, and it's one of the only non-toxic pure spirulinas on the market unlike a lot of them it actually comes in a glass container which is really good and then i was also adding different types of nuts normally macadamia nuts and then quite a few times i was adding macadamia nuts that were actually grown in thailand and they were raw not pasteurized and I made sure that i soaked them for around six to eight hours to neutralize the phytates to make them easier to digest and for my body to break them down and assimilate them way way easier and then at certain times i would add the coconut oil to it and then i'd add things such as creatine monohydrate which this is the brand i use this is actually the most highest quality creatine that you can buy on the market by all max and i've been consuming that for years and years and years so that was nothing new and the protein powders that I would use is either some more as protein powder or this pea protein powder that is infused with enzymes. And I've been using these for a very long time as well before I got on this diet. And add in this type of salt, Redmond sea salt, which is one of the best sea salts that you can buy possible. And one of the tastiest, well, I absolutely love this one. And I was using this again before I embarked on this journey. And what I want to say is the whole time I was using no sweeteners added to my smoothies whatsoever. And I found at the start, my smoothies weren't tasting so good. I started adding things such as sunflower butter, peanut butter, and it was just tasting too much like nuts and it just wasn't good whatsoever. But over a period of time, I learned how to make the smoothies better for me. And the only 
types of fruit that I was adding to it was normally mulberries, on a rare occasion, strawberries and other low glycemic index berries to make sure that I wasn't getting too much carbohydrates so I still stay in a state of ketosis. And for dinner, I'd normally just have so many different low carbohydrate vegetables such as broccoli, mushroom, zucchini, tomatoes and all of these other different vegetables and I was making sure I was eating loads and loads and loads so I could get an abundance of different minerals to make me feel the best that I possibly could so I could have the most optimal mineral and electrolyte balance so the keto diet would work the best for me. And then normally my fat sources, I was adding these olives which are the best olives in the world. They aren't cheap but most olives on the market are actually ripened with synthetic agents. They normally add toxic preservatives and additives to it, which are normally non, well, not non-GMO, but there are GMO things that are added to it, which are not good whatsoever. And a lot of them add a substance to it to actually make them go black. And these ones are organic, non-GMO, raw, vegan, gluten-free, all of that stuff. And man. They smell so good. And these are rich and savory, naturally cured. I highly recommend these. And any of the things that you could buy that I'm showing here, there'll be all links down below for them in case you're interested in them. And also, I have been consuming the majority of the time hummus, but making sure that I was not ever getting too much hummus because if you eat too much, you're gonna get way too many carbohydrates. And the hummus that I was having was made with unrefined sea salt and only olive oil added to it and some natural herbs and spices. And then a lot of time adding this pretty much every time, shelled hemp seeds, which because they've been de -holed, they have no phytates in, so they're really easy to digest. They have a good balance of omega three to six, and they're just a really tasty, healthy fat that also has an abundance of different minerals. And then again, I'd eat the macadamia nuts. Then I found out there was somewhere that was making fermented vegan cheese. Started eating that, really liking it. They're making like camembert vegan cheese, feta vegan cheese, just so many different fermented vegan cheese. And literally down the road for me, which was really, really nice. And always cooking the food in the coconut oil that I showed you earlier. None of these unhealthy, plant-based oils out there, which the majority of them are rancid and very high in polyunsaturated fatty acids, which actually have a negative effect on your hormone production and your digestion and your health illicitly. So that's something that I wanna mention. I was making sure that this specific vegan ketogenic diet that I have been eating for 30 days, that is very low in polyunsaturated fatty acids, because if it's too high, it's gonna have those negative effects I mentioned, then it can make you feel really garbage. So that's just something to be aware of. And early on I was using peanut butter, but peanut butter is really high in omega-6 and very low in omega-3, so it can really cause this massive imbalance between the two. So I was using it early on, and then I just discontinued using it all together. I was using a variation of those things, not all of them at once. And I made sure this is something that I think you need to be aware of. That I was always taking this Fauna Research multivitamin to make sure that I was hitting every single different micronutrient that I needed on this diet. And I was doing this previously on the other diets that I was on. This is one of the best supplements on the market you can buy. Not one of the cheapest, but you get what you pay for. Always making sure that I was taking this high quality Nuik, EPA, and DHA to make sure that I was getting enough of these essential fatty acids to make you feel the best on this diet. So I was normally taking three of these with my first smoothie and then a lot of time three later on with dinner. Then I take two of these with my first meal of the day, the EPA and DHA. And also making sure it's taking this Indonol 3 carbonyl. My light's a bit bright so you can't see it so well. Um, Indonol 3 carbonyl, which is naturally found within cruciferous vegetables and it's actually an estrogen blocker and it removes excess estrogen from the body. And yeah, I'm gonna put that one a little bit closer because I just saw that you can see it better. So that's the brand, of that one that I was using. And that, and also making sure that I was taking an additional B12 supplement as always, just like on any other vegan diet. And then for my protein sources, I tried experiment tempeh. Tempeh gives me really bad gas and bloating, like absolutely crazy. I've never really had issues with gas and bloating in my whole entire life. So then I switched to tofu and found that I could get on with that, which 
really confused me because people say tempeh is better for you than tofu. But anyway, yeah, started making a lot of tofu scramble. And that is the majority of the foods I was eating the whole time during this 30 day period. So pretty much eating the same type of foods the majority of the time, except for when I was eating out, I would eat certain dishes that were different to what I was making at home. And I would always take my own fat sources with it and make sure that the food I was buying, well, the meals were also high fat meals as well. And obviously by bringing my own fats, I could make sure I was getting all the fats that I needed in an abundance. Because normally when I was eating out, the meals were not having enough fat added to it to give me enough of the fat to keep me in a ketogenic state, well, a state of ketosis. Oh, and I also ordered this and it came about halfway through the journey. This is MCT8 oil, which is by Kiss My Keto. And it's actually in a glass bottle. I made sure I got one of the best on the market. It's got some of the best reviews, most of them in plastic bottles, which if it's in plastic, it's gonna leach out the plastic substances such as xenoestrogens, which increases estrogen production within the body, which is not a good thing. A lot of people have issues with estrogen dominance and it lowers testosterone. And I'm always trying to do as many things as I can to get rid of excess estrogen that shouldn't be there and boost my testosterone levels as much as I possibly can naturally. So I started adding this to smoothies and it says to start off with a little amount. So I started off with around one teaspoon daily in my smoothie and I found once I started consuming this my energy levels and my mind just went to the next level again it felt like I'd taken some sort of smart which is really really interesting so I was really happy that I got the benefits from this and the specific C8 MCT oil is the type of MCT oil that is known to give people the best sports performance benefits and energy benefits. This is why I was drawn to it because I train on a regular basis, run multiple businesses and I need a lot of energy. Then we got to day 14. Eating my foods as normal. Started eating quite a bit of that fermented vegan cheese. Then that evening on day 14, ate the, the meal that I normally do with vegan cheese at home, not at a restaurant. Then went to bed later on the evening. Woke up about two hours later, wide awake, with the most extreme nausea that I've ever pretty much had in my life, except for a few rare cases. It's not a common thing to happen for me. And a lot of people say this is keto flu, this is not whatsoever. A lot of people say keto flu symptoms, are, well, certain symptoms in people, keto flu symptoms, it's not whatsoever. So I laid there for about an hour or so, and then I woke my girlfriend up, and I'm sweating so much, and I can feel my body needs to just completely release it out of me, but I'm not someone that finds it easy to be sick, even if I put my fingers down my throat. So I'm there just feeling really sorry for myself, groaning, moaning, crawling over in a ball, and then after a while, I just completely just blah everywhere in this bucket, just more and more and more and more. And I'm not sure exactly why this happened, but I think there was maybe some contamination issues with the vegan cheese and some bacteria being in there that my body did not like whatsoever because it felt exactly like food poisoning to me. So what I wanted to do is get it out of me as quick as possible, take activated charcoal and water because that would absorb anything that was causing me any food poisoning from the cheese I'd eaten, the vegan cheese more specifically. And I did that after, well, after, releasing many different times and feeling like there's nothing else coming up and it being a really horrific experience. Try drinking activated charcoal water and it would just make me bring all up again. Then I try and drink water again and it would come up and it's just like, man, this isn't good. And I was feeling really achy in my body, just not good at all in every, any way, shape or form. And I started to get a little bit concerned. But then it got to a point, hours later, and I pretty much hadn't slept the whole night that I could keep the activated charcoal down and then it massively reduced the nausea that I'd had. But then for about the next following three days, I still had this underlying nausea, my energy levels have been completely ruined and just not feeling good whatsoever, but I knew I just needed to recover from what was going on. But during this process, I thought maybe I need to quit the vegan keto diet. But I just persisted and pushed through and rested as much as possible, didn't expect much of myself and just hoped for the best that I would get through it because during those three days as well, because my had well because I had this scar, my, my hunger massively reduced, and I had pretty much no desire for fats. So I was still eating vegan keto, but not 
as many calories and not as much fat because I just need to be gentle on my body and not push it too much. So after around those three days, all of those symptoms went and I started to be able to eat the amount of calories that I was eating before, which I was normally eating around 2,000 calories to 2,500 calories a day from what I saw from looking at my chronometer and inputting all the food that I was eating daily. Now from this point forward, things just started to really go downhill. So after those three days, I felt good for, let's see, around five days. Then what I started to notice was, pretty much every time I was eating my dinner meal, I would get really severe gas and bloating. So I was like, oh no, not another thing. The keto diet was working for me really, really well. Then I was sick and then this, and it's just not something nice stuff with. And like I said, I've pretty much never suffered with this issue before. I didn't have it before I got on this diet, except for if I consumed tempeh, which I know just to avoid that completely. And what happened whilst this was going on, I became completely intolerant to vegan cheese. There was another time that I tried coming back to it. My body just did not like it whatsoever. And then I discovered that I had become intolerant to the tofu. So I could not only not eat tempeh, I couldn't eat tofu and then vegan cheese. So I was already eating a very limited amount of foods and then it was making it even more restrictive for me. But I was like, okay, that's just what's happening. I need to listen to my body and do and not do certain things that I know it's wanted me to do and not do. Then from this period of time, I'd feel good at certain times throughout the day, sometimes good in the morning, sometimes good in the evening, sometimes good in the middle of the day, and, and then not at other times in the day, it just being all over the show. And yeah, just not a good experience, but I wanted to push through this and really give it a go for 30 days to see what was going on. And then on day 26, when I was actually feeling good at that time, I thought I'd try taking about one and a half teaspoon of the MCT oil on an empty stomach to break my fast. Bad, bad idea. A lot of people can get issues with MCT oil causing diarrhea, constipation, intestinal tract pain, stomach pain, digestive pain, and other different things that can vary from person to person. Within about half an hour, for around two hours solid, I had the most intense digestive pain that you could ever possibly imagine. It was absolutely horrific. And I was at the time when this induced within me and it was just not good whatsoever. I had to come home and just embrace it and just wait until it went away, which it did take quite a bit of time to go away. But then once it went, I did start to feel quite a bit better, but then I had all these body aches and it just felt like something had poisoned me, which is not good whatsoever. And then I found it just started to not have a good effect on my digestion. I remember getting a little bit of diarrhea from it, which is obviously my body saying it did not want it in there and it's trying to eliminate it. Then the next day, I thought, okay, I'll just go back to eating it in my smoothie, because that's what I've been doing the whole time, rather than on empty stomach. Took one tablespoon of it, put it in my smoothie. As soon as I started eating the smoothie, extreme nausea came on. Had to throw that smoothie away, not consume it whatsoever, wait till the nausea went, and then I could eat something later on. Then I found the following day, on day 28, I didn't have that much of a desire for fat, and I had such a huge desire for way, way, way more protein. So I started adding in a bit more protein, still having a lot of fat, and my body started to feel better and it was really, really liking it. So it's good that I was listening to my body. And then on day 29, I felt the first time some cravings for some carbohydrate food sources. I can't remember specifically what foods, but it wasn't too strong whatsoever. And what I want to mention is early on in this vegan ketogenic diet, I was massively craving coconut water, which I would normally consume a lot of it on my diet that I was consuming before. And I thought this could be due to me needing certain minerals. So yeah, I was making sure I was taking the supplements, doing all the other things that I mentioned to make sure that I was getting exactly what the coconut water could have supplied with me. And I would say that, yeah, I had to have some slight discipline around not consuming it and saying no. But because I wanted to say dedicated to start and do it properly, it was just pretty much very easy for me to say no. And I found after a short while that I just didn't want it anymore once it got on to about 
day seven of this vegan ketogenic diet. Oh, something I forgot to add, and this started around day 20 to 22, so I should have mentioned this early on, but yeah, I'm mixing it up a little bit, but pff, that's just the way it's going. What started happening was I would go to sleep, and then around 1 to 2 a.m., I would wake up wide alert, and I'm someone that goes to bed around 8 p.m. I need around eight to nine hours sleep, sometimes 10 hours sleep. And this can happen to people because you have so much energy on a ketogenic diet, but for me, I wasn't waking up feeling absolutely amazing. I was feeling quite wide alert, but I definitely felt that my body needed to sleep more and not stay up. And I would just lay there for ages, and I pretty much just wouldn't fall asleep. So. This is obviously not a good thing because my body wasn't healing or regenerating. So this started having a negative effect on how my mind and body was feeling throughout the whole day. So I did more research into this, started messing around with a few things. And I found by putting a pinch of the unrefined sea salt in water, if I would wake up, I would drink a small amount of that. And I also started taking a melatonin supplement before bed because melatonin is the hormone that is key for resolving insomnia. It's not necessarily just gonna be that alone, but I found the combination of those two. The melatonin made it so I would sleep longer and then I would still wake up and then I'd drink the sea salt water and I found that it would resolve that issue because it can be due to an electrolyte imbalance. So it seemed that I needed more salt at nighttime, just not in the daytime. Because if I had it earlier on the day, too much salt, it would just destroy my energy levels for the whole day and I feel really drowsy. So before I go on to explaining to you what happens at certain times throughout this 30 day ketogenic experimentation, is I made sure that I was using these multiple times every single day. These are ketosis strips. And I found that I was getting into a state of ketosis very early on in this ketogenic diet. I think it's because I've done a lot of things such as one meal a day and other forms of intermittent fasting. So my body was pretty good at producing abundance of ketones. And I would normally be in the high range. So anywhere from 8.0 to 16, which from what I've learned can happen and does happen to most people when you get on a ketogenic diet, your body's producing abundance of ketones. Your body is not using them all up, is not very adapted to using the ketones that are preserved. So I've tried to do my best to explain to you the whole journey with this and yes, I am going to still continue on this diet, but I have come to this point. So now I want to go into two other things. Am I going to stick to the ketogenic diet? And also, do I think the ketogenic diet was the reason why I got all these benefits? First off, I'm going to start with the second one that I just mentioned. So prior to eating this diet, I was eating a lot of unhealthy vegan junk food, Quite a few times it would have coconut sugar in or white sugar or a gluten and unhealthy oils and other certain things that are not the healthiest for us. So I believe, yes, the vegan ketogenic diet was giving me a lot of benefits, especially early on, but then we had all these ups and downs. But I think just as with most people that switch to any diet, I removed a lot, pretty much all of the unhealthy processed foods from my diet that were just not the best for me whatsoever. And I did notice that my skin started to really clear up because I had all these like bumps over me, like small amounts of acne. So I found my skin became way softer and clearer and your whole digestive system is a reflection, well, your skin is a reflection of your digestive health and the amount of different toxic substances you got in there and foods you're intolerant to or maybe even had allergies to and so on. So, yeah, in many ways, it was a food elimination diet. It started to get me to eat way, way healthier, and it helped me gain a healthier relationship with food. And I found that unlike on a vegan junk food diet in many ways, that I didn't need to eat as large quantity of foods, and I got satiated for way longer. Like, when I was actually eating the meals, I found I didn't need nowhere near as much to feel as full. And I found that hunger was just not an issue on this diet whatsoever. Not that I really had it in a carbohydrate diet, but I found that I could go way longer periods 
with feeling completely satiated, which is really good for people, especially if you want to lose weight. And also, I was obviously getting the benefits from my body producing and utilizing ketones. I was also getting a lot of healthy fats, which before, when I was getting fats, they were really unhealthy fats. So I started to supply my body with an abundance of high quality, healthy fats that is really key for optimal hormone production and just health and digestion holistically. So, the answer to the other thing that I want to mention is, will I stick to this diet? And I had this experience about a week ago or so, where I started to question whether I would stay on this vegan diet or not. And I said that I would for 30 days, and if I was feeling really amazing pretty much all the time, then I'd continue to do it. So, I am still continuing to do it at the moment, but through this whole process that I went through and talking to some other different people that I connect with and I really trust, I just have come to this place now, which is really good that this vegan ketogenic diet has done for me. I'm no longer gonna say that I eat any type of specific diet except for a vegan diet. I can pretty much guarantee that I'm gonna stick to a vegan diet, but I don't wanna say that I'm eating a ketogenic diet or a high carbohydrate vegan diet, a raw vegan diet. Instead, I'm just gonna do intuitive eating, which I've also termed the name the flexitarian diet. So I'm gonna listen to my body every single day, and instead of just listening to my brain and getting myself to stick to a certain diet and eat specific foods, I'm just gonna listen internally as much as possible. If there's days where I want more fat, or more carbs, or more protein, and there's days where I wanna be keto for the whole day, or high carbohydrate, well, eating a high carbohydrate the whole day. And I just think this is the best way for me to have the healthiest relationship with food, because there's many times I become very disciplined and dogmatic with a diet, and it can be more destructive than good for me. So I'm not knocking the vegan ketogenic diet at all, but that is the direction that I'm going to go in. And I would recommend this to anyone, because we are in a constant state of changing and our body wants to have homeostasis at all times. And there's times where we do need other certain foods. And the thing on this vegan ketogenic diet is a very restrictive diet. And yes, I was hitting all my macronutrients and micronutrients, but I'd rather eat the broadest spectrum of plant-based whole foods at least the majority of the time, if I want to indulge in some vegan junk food here and there, then so be it, but just not eat them the majority of the time. So just try and eat as clean and as healthy as possible. And by doing that, I'm making sure that I'm getting the widest variety of food and the widest variety of nutrients. So yeah, this is the direction that I'm gonna go in. And yeah, I will still continue to do intermittent fasting. And I definitely say I found it easier to get on this ketogenic diet because I was used to do intermittent fasting, anywhere from two meals a day to one meal a day. So I would recommend for anyone that wants to get into this, if you don't have any experience with a vegan ketogenic diet or any type of ketogenic diet, you want to do this vegan ketogenic diet, you don't have any experience of intermittent fasting or extended fasting, start implementing intermittent fasting into whatever diet you're eating for around two weeks or so, so your body can become used to burning your own body fat as fuel whilst you're in the fastest state and it's gonna make it easier for you to transition to a vegan ketogenic diet. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna have loads of other videos following this one on so many different things to do with a vegan ketogenic diet. So if you're someone that wants to learn more about this, make sure that you do click the subscribe button, you do click the bell notification button, next subscribe button, otherwise YouTube will not notify you of those new videos that we uploaded. And if you'd like me to make any specific vegan ketogenic videos, such as what I eat in a day or any other types of ones that relate to this diet, let me know down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to make them for you as soon as possible. If you like the video, like it down below, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give us a thumbs down. And please share this video with anyone else you think wants to hear about my 30 day vegan keto experiment. That had some ups and had some downs. And yeah, it was definitely a really amazing experience for me to go on. Definitely made me get rid of my fears of fat and yeah, it's just gonna be interesting to see what happens with this diet in the future. Like I said, I'm not necessarily gonna eat this way all the time, but we shall see what happens. So, as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those gains. Peace.